in judgment in the appeal, Secretary of State for Home Department and MN and KY. Lord Carnworth will explain the decision of the court. The crucial issue in both these cases was whether the applicant's claim to come from a particular region of Somalia was to be believed. If it was, it was clear that they had been at risk of persecution and were entitled to be treated as refugees. The Secretary of State did not believe them. She relied on linguistic analysis, which linked their mode of speaking to Kenya and not Somalia. That evidence was provided by a Swedish commercial organization called Sprakab. The, their reports were anonymized in that they identified individual contributors by a code rather than by name, but they also gave some details of their qualifications and experience. The short but important issue raised by these appeals is whether the tribunal was entitled to accept evidence in that form, and if so, subject to what constraints and safeguards. Guidance on that subject had been given in another case in early 2012 by a special three-judge panel of the Upper Tribunal, that case being called RB Somalia. In both the present cases, the Upper Tribunal, relying on the guidance in RB, accepted the Sprakab reports and rejected the applications for asylum. The Inner House allowed the appeals and made some wide-ranging criticisms of the reports. The case has come to this court by way of appeal by the Secretary of State. In a judgment given by myself, the Supreme Court unanimously dismisses the appeals, but not all of the reasoning of the Inner House is supported. The court accepts the guidance given by the upper tribunal in RB as generally appropriate, but with some qualifications and with some suggestions for improvement. On the issue of anonymity, while the tribunal has power to make such a direction, its exercise requires special justification. It was relevant, however, that this was evidence advanced on behalf of a named organization based on the collaborative work of individuals with different skills within it. The names of the individuals were available to the tribunal and could have been made known to the parties if it became necessary to do so. Subject to appropriate safeguards <coughs> and to satisfying themselves that in the circumstance of the particular case no prejudice was caused, the upper tribunal were entitled to find no objection in principle to reports in this form. In two respects, however, the RB guidance is potentially misleading. The first is as to the weight to be given to the Sprakab reports. The guidance appears to underplay the importance in any case of the tribunal itself examining such a report critically in the light of all the evidence and of the reasoning supporting its conclusion. Similarly, on the issue of anonymity, the guidance gives insufficient emphasis to the duty of the tribunal in any future case to determine what justice requires in the light of the other evidence and submissions made to them in the particular case. In the present cases, there are clear reasons for dismissing the appeals on their own facts. As was conceded, the comments in the Sprakab reports on knowledge of country and culture, as opposed to linguistics, were inadequately supported by any demonstrated expertise of the authors. Further, it appeared from the language used by the upper tribunal judge that he had treated the guidance in RB as more than merely persuasive, but as in effect determinative of the issues before him.